Hey, what's up y'all? Goats here, Bubba the Car Guy shop. Today I'm taking a look at my Tundra because my CV boot is blown. So I'm gonna be pulling the CV axle off, putting a new boot on, seeing how that goes. Never done this before on the Tundra, so hopefully it's not too difficult. I have done it on my 4Runner before. I think it's gonna be pretty similar. Just gotta jack the vehicle up off the ground, remove the wheel and the tire, take off the CV axle nut, and then there are, I believe, two bolts on the lower side of the uh, ball joint that I gotta pull off, and then I should be able to get the CV axle free. So we're gonna do that today and hopefully get this thing patched up. I wanna show you here real quick what we're looking at. It's been like this for a while. Hopefully the camera will pick this up, but there's a lot of oil, not oil, but there's a lot of grease right there. So it's been leaking for a while, small hole. So the grease has been slowly, slowly coming out. And even though this thing's under warranty, the Toyota dealership would not do it for me. They said because I had a lift kit, they wouldn't work on it because they couldn't determine if the lift kit did the damage or not, which I don't believe is true, but I didn't really feel like fighting with them and I can just do it myself. So I'm gonna take care of it. First things first, let's get the vehicle up off the ground and take the wheel off. With the wheel off, now I gotta take off this little cap here. I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver, just work it around the edge. Got the cap off. Mine was a little rusted, so I had some trouble getting it off, but it eventually came loose. I had to use a really thin flathead screwdriver to get it started. Then I upgraded to a bigger flathead screwdriver. Then I upgraded to this tire spudger. I used to use this for motorcycle tires and this actually uh, gave me some leverage to pop it off. That rust was holding it pretty good. Next we're gonna take the cotter pin out, take the castle nut off and figure out what size this nut is. I actually don't know. I've got a 41 millimeter right here, a 35 millimeter and a 39 millimeter. I hope it's one of these. I'll let you know in a second though. All right, I got the axle nut off. It was a 39 millimeter for my 2017 Tundra. I had to use this breaker bar and I put this extension on it. And then what I did to keep the whole assembly from spinning We'll stuck this guy right here while I uh, broke the nut loose. Mine was rusted on pretty good. It was a little hard to get off, but it will come off. Just take your time. Maybe you could use some PB Blaster or something. And then next, I want to get at these. Uh, these are 22 millimeters. There's two of these. I'm going to remove both of these 22 millimeters here. I don't think I have to remove the middle one. I might. But I'm going to remove these 22 millimeters first, and that should uh, give me some wiggle room. But yeah, I might have to remove this middle one with the cotter pin in it. We'll see in just a second. All right, with the two 22 millimeters out down here, you can see they come to this other side. The sun's kind of ruining the shot there you can see I got it separated in the lower ball joint now I've got some some wiggle room here so I should be able to tap on this yeah it's moving and uh, you know I'll tap this with a rubber mallet as I pull towards me and that should give me some room to get the CV axle started on this end at least and then I'll go in the differential I believe that's the differential I don't really know all my terminology a lot of times but yeah whatever the CV axle connects to don't really matter to me I just know that I got to pry it out of there but we got to get it off the hub first so we're gonna do that now all 
Okay, well, with a little bit of pulling, tapping with the rubber mallet, got the CV axle removed from this end. Now I'm going to pry it from this end and then I should be able to pull it out. So I'm gonna go grab a pry bar and see if I can uh, pop this thing out of its socket. CV axle is out. Um, this was no fun. Let me see if I can get a better shot of it. You can kind of see how I'm mangled up. Uh, this entire edge here trying to get the CV axle out mine was really stuck This is only a 2017 Tundra, but it was extremely stuck. I had to wedge This pry bar Into the CV axle and simultaneously hit it with a hammer Pretty hard and then it like after about 20 minutes of fooling with it It finally started to wiggle loose so I've got it out, you can see here, get into the light, all the grease on there that's coming out of the boot. I actually don't see a hole though, so I don't know if the grease was just like, maybe it came loose or maybe it's torn in here. I can't really see just yet, but there's a lot of grease there. So otherwise it looks all right. I'll clean it up before I put it back in. Uh, I'm gonna cut this boot off and put the new boot on put fill it with grease put the new boot on all right this is a travesty I made a mess but I got the CV axle apart uh, there was this little retaining clip here that was on this side of the CV axle going around this entire lip here you see how big it is so it goes on that outer lip you remove that retaining clip and then you can pull the whole assembly out so your your little uh, balls are going to fall out they're going to drop your balls are going to drop and once your balls drop you can take the assembly apart and then there's a little c-clip right here around those uh, splines that i've got to remove next but i keep getting my hands all greased up so i believe once i get that out then i can slide these two pieces off here put my new boot on and uh, as you can see here, I probably didn't need to do this. Uh, as I started looking at my boot a little closer, it was leaking, but it was just leaking from the, uh, this band here, like it wasn't tight enough. So I probably could have popped the band off and put a new one on and, and got it really tight and, and been okay. But you know i didn't notice that until i had already cut into the boot and popped stuff apart so you know don't be like me if your stuff is just barely leaking you don't see a hole you might just need to tighten up the connector and save yourself a whole lot of trouble but anyways we're going to try and get this clip off and then slide this part of the assembly off i'm going to pay attention to the orientation the way this goes and then i'll put the new boot on got the c-clip off you can see it here just use this little tool to uh, expand it and then popped it off with a flathead screwdriver so you can see the splines there what I had to do is gently tap uh, this inner piece here with a hammer till it slid up and off and then slid the other piece off so got everything apart I've got grease everywhere so I need to degrease this as best I can so I've got this bucket here about to drop everything in get it degreased and then put the new boot on and hopefully get this thing back together and call this job done. So we're gonna degrease and then put the new boot on, pack it with grease. All right, I got all my components degreased here. So I had a, a bucket of purple power, threw everything in there and uh, wiped it down with a clean rag, just letting it dry now. Let's see here, you can see clean in there. So you don't get any cross grease contamination make sure there's no dirt so i got these up on this pad so they're not on the ground no grit in there and uh, i've remembered the orientation of this guy just to make sure i put everything back in correctly because this does this is shaped a certain way so when the uh when the cv axle 
if I put this on the ground and put this straight up vertical, then this guy will drop on this direction. So that's kind of how I've remembered how to put it back together. So I'm letting this stuff dry. I'm gonna clean up the axle itself just so I don't get uh, as messy. And then I've got my boot in the truck. So I'll slot that on, make sure I get my connectors, uh, these little guys here on and put this thing back together. All right, got this thing cleaned off. I'm gonna do my best to film this. It's kind of hard to hold with one hand and uh, film. So we're gonna set the tripod up like so and see if that works. So I've got, where'd my little clip go? Oh, this is it right here. We got this guy, drop that on first. Got my boot here. Let's see if we can get this on. Snug fit, I guess that's a good thing. I'm gonna pull it down further just so I have some room to work here. Yeah, there we go. Put that on. Here's my other, uh, this will be for the outer edge, but I'm gonna leave that for now. And Let's see here. So, this guy is going to go in. First, I got to drop this piece on. Just going to let it sit in the boot for now. Then I have to tap this on, which those splines aren't really dry yet, so I'm gonna dry these real quick as best I can. It's just a little bit of grease in there. That's much better. Let's see, then this slides on, and then it should hold. Yeah, okay, so that seems right, that holds. need my hammer, which I is not in dis grabbing distance. Here we go. I'm just going to tap around very gently, just enough until it clears where I can put the C-clip on. Try not to damage the splines or this piece itself. I don't even know what this piece would be called. to go down a little further it's kind of not wanting to snap all the way down all right I don't know what that's all about unless there's a certain unless there's an orientation that it has to be let's look at it Oh, yep, it's got to go a certain way. So I had it upside down. So there's little notches on the splines there, and I had it upside down. I believe it's got to go this way so the notches, so it's, it's opened up more now because I couldn't get it quite down far enough to get the C-clip on. There we go. Okay, put that on. And this piece should hold and it does so now i've got to put the c-clip on which i may not be able to do this and talk at the same time or hold it rather at the same time and grab my little tool over here for the c-clip Might just be able to pull this with needle nose as well. Ay, 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 ay. I'm gonna 
get one side in the groove or try to and then try and pop this other side in which that doesn't really seem to be working either there we go all right c-clip is in that'll hold now This assembly go like this, and I've got to put it all back in here. And I've got to line up each of these ball bearings. Let's see. I'll try to let me move the camera here. So I think this will be the easiest way to do this. And hopefully you can see because I've got to get the balls in these. There's little slots. Well, it's going to be hard to see, but we're going to give this a shot here. Let's see. Like that, but it's going to be really hard to get these in. I don't know if there's maybe a way to do this that would be easier. Hmm. Because they just want to fall out once you put them all in. Let's see. I'm going to try and hold them with my fingers. Oh, there's lost one. Rolling around, let me try and clean that a little bit. Okay, oh, oh. Yeah, see, that's gonna suck. And then try and line these up. Uh, that might have been it. Yeah, those are in. Okay, so that's in. Um, I can go ahead and put this clip in because that will stop everything from falling out. So we'll tap, we'll put this clip in, and then I won't have to worry about losing the balls. Yeah. So everything's held. Hopefully you can see there all the balls are slotted. Everything's holding. Okay. And that should be it. Now I'm just going to pack this thing with grease and secure the boot. So, just pack it of grease here. Find some scissors or a carpenter blade. Now I've got scissors. And we'll squeeze this in here. I don't want to lose any of it, so I got to figure out the best way to orient this thing so this stuff doesn't fall out. Okay, well, I don't know if you can see that or not, but. We're just going to start packing in the grease. I want to get all of it in there. All right. Let's see if I can get this last little bit. 
Okay. Let me do a little goop there. There we go. Okay. I'll try and pack it down in there a little bit. If I could just kind of work the boot around for a second, pull this glove off and do that. Try to not get grease everywhere. Okay, now we're gonna slot this guy on. Uh, all right, I'm gonna try and attach the boot now. Just slop it over like so. Let's see, no, Let's see where's the, the lip at? Make sure this thing gets completely on. This side's on. Okay. This is really hard to film and only do with two hands, especially when you've never done it before. My first time. I want to make sure that fully gets on there. Looks pretty good. I'm going to lay this down now. you would call this. So I think you're going to try and go as far as you can. I wasn't going to go any further. Got this tool here that is designed specifically for these. So you should be able to grab and it will tighten it. Let's see if I can get a better angle. It's on there pretty good. So solid, it's even all the way around. And so now, I'm trying to figure out, let's see, that one's like right on the bin, so I guess you kind of put it right in the middle of that thing. I'm gonna see where to cinch this down at. I think I'm gonna go right here. All right, I've got this one cinched down. It's on there snug. I'm just gonna do this guy. And it's packed with grease. So we just line this up, make sure everything looks good. And we'll give this a squeeze. OK. 
Okay, yeah, that's on there. Kind of protruding out. Let me make sure that that's not gonna pop out. No, I guess it's all right. It's not gonna go anywhere. You could hit it with a hammer just to tap it down a little bit. There. All right, well, packed with grease, boots back on. Everything is snug in there. I'm gonna kind of work this, get some of that grease in there. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna fix this lip that I bent up a little bit. Did it. Trying to tap this thing out. Then I'm gonna slot it back in. All right, I think I'm ready to put this thing back in and I'm hoping that it's similar to my Forerunner where people say put this uh, C-clip, the opening facing upwards and then slot it in. So I'm gonna try and get this thing in, make sure it seats correctly. Just give it a push. I'm hoping it clicks right in and yeah, put everything back together. I'll get the torque specs on the axle nut and the two I believe they were 22 millimeter bolts on the lower ball joint and torque this thing all back to spec. Alright y'all, I got it all back together. I've got the lower control arm bolts back in. Those get torqued to 221 foot-pounds and the axle nut gets torqued to 249 foot-pounds. Everything's in. Let's see if you can get in there a little bit. It's nice and clean, no leaks anymore. So I'm just gonna finish putting it back together. Put the castle nut back on. Um, put the cotter pin back in. So just to recap, I had a leak in that inner boot on my CV axle on my 2017 Tundra. So we pulled off the wheel, we loosened the axle nut, pulled the cotter pin out, removed the castle nut. Had to use a lot of force to get the CV axle out. It's kind of stuck, but popped out uh, with a little bit of effort, prying on it and hammering on it. So we got that out. We had to disassemble the CV axle to put the new boot on. So there's a few clips in there that you got to be mindful of, but overall not too difficult. We packed the new grease in and then we reassembled. So this is my first time doing this on the Tundra. Uh, so it was a learning experience for me. I hope that you all found it helpful. Maybe you learned something. If you like the video, tap that thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more Toyota content, I'm going to keep working on my vehicles. Hope everybody's doing well out there. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.